required to be a court to education, but also because of our recognition that creating understanding among the youth is the surest way to secure the future of the world. So, sure. the citizens of Memphis can be proud of their city for its foresight in the world. So, sure. sure. the citizens of Memphis, sorry, can be proud of their city for its foresight in establishing the Memphis in May International Festival, and particularly in setting aside a period to salute and celebrate one country. So, sure. we have traveled several hundred miles from across the oceans in the very heart of Africa to celebrate with the city this year. And it is only right that we make the most of the opportunity to foster greater understanding as a contribution to the enhancement of the relations between the peoples of our two countries. So, Ghana has been called the Black Star of Africa, the heartbeat of the continent. She was not only the first sub-Saharan country to gain independence from colonial rule, but she spearheaded the struggle to the, for the liberation of the whole continent. So, so. at independence, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, our first president, famously declared that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it's linked up with the total liberation of the continent of Africa. So, that became the mantle of the new nation and the people of Ghana pursued that struggle until the whole of Africa was free from colonial rule and an evil system of apartheid was brought to an end in South Africa. So, so. but freedom did not lead automatically to the fulfillment of the aspirations of the people. Ghana and most of the newly liberated states have had to grapple with the overwhelming challenges against which the post-independence leadership could not survive. So, sure. we have gone through political and economic turbulence of frightening dimensions. We have tested one party state and tested military rule. Those experiences have informed the choice of the people of Ghana for a multi-party democracy portrayed by the rule of law. So, historians and political analysts have often attributed the immediate post-independence travels of Africa to the twin devils of so-called tribalism and the autocratic traits of the leadership of the independence struggle. So, such simplistic analysis do little justice to Africa. It ignores a complex historical milieu within which the new states came into being. So, 